Hello, what's up, peeps? This is the Geek God is back again with another video, and this time, as promised on the last video, we're gonna take a deeper look at photo bashing over one of the many AI generated images we got last time using Nvidia Gauguin 2 as a part of this new AI art series. And we will check out the steps to go from this to this. If you missed the previous video, I shared my views and opinions about AI generated art and showed the step by step method of generating stunning environments using basic and super simple prompts using Gauguin with multiple examples and then easily turning them into cool landscape concept arts with basic photo bashing, go ahead and check it out now. And don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe and hit the bell icon to receive notifications about my future uploads. And also make sure to watch this video till the end to find out how we'll go from this to this. Okay, so if you want to see how you can easily generate images like this from basic prompts like this, Go check out my previous video where I explain it all in details. Now, once you have an image like this that you find interesting, you can bring it into Photoshop, perform some surgery on it. So, as you can see, the image is in a 1 is to 1 square frame, while the canvas I've taken is a 16 is to 9 wide frame. So, I'll shift the image to one side over to the left, and I'll use the rectangular marquee tool to select the excess area that needs to be extended and press shift plus F5 on my keyboard to bring up the fill option set to content aware mode. I'll click on OK or press enter button and there we go. Not very accurate or smart but good enough as a base to paint on top of. Next I'll import one of the other images I had generated from the same prompt, something more clear detailed rocky formation. I'll set it to multiply blending mode so that the darker areas like the mountains stay while the lighter areas like the sky almost disappear. I'll further make some levels adjustments to it with the keyboard shortcut Ctrl plus L. Push the three pointers towards the middle in order to crank up the contrast and get strong darks and strong whites. That way only the strong darks will remain visible. So now the sky has completely disappeared and I'm placing it in the foreground corner. I could have neatly cut it out and did a proper color grading to achieve this, but photo bashing or image bashing is supposed to be fast, quick and rough. That's why it's fun, it's very spontaneous and instinctive. Next I'll use the warp transform to re-sculpt the shape into something more sharp and lean, pointing towards a larger mountain in the background, all roughly following the rule of thirds. Next I'll use the lasso tool to refine the edges a bit more. Now, there are some bright patches here in the immediate foreground, so it's time for some quick paint over. I'll use the brush tool, pick the dark tone from the nearby area and paint over that bright area. Then pick a lighter shade from there and extend some subtle highlights. Cool. Now it's time to deal with the wonky sky in the background that we got using content aware fill. I'll use the lasso tool to select that area. Press Ctrl plus T to transform it and rotate it to match it along the horizon. So now we have something that looks like a stretch of huge cliffs very far away. But it's a bit too dark, gotta push it back in depth. I'll pick the soft brush tool with low opacity, pick a brighter tone from the nearby sky and paint it all over the cliff area to create more depth. I can also show some flowing steam or dust to add more interesting variation there. Next I'll use a hard brush with higher opacity to clean up the sky area. I'll pick nearby colors to blend that area well, then some soft airbrushing to blend it better. Next up I feel that the whole frame is a bit scattered or the left background mountain is too far to the left. It needs to be more towards the center. So I'll select all the layers, Ctrl plus T and then push it slightly to the right. And once again use content aware fill to easily extend the blank area on the left side. So for the areas looking muddy in the ground, I'll select the area and stretch the texture to the left and paint some brush strokes there. And near the water and horizon to make things cleaner and more consistent. Alright, next we'll play around with the water or the river area. I'll use a hard textured brush, pick the whitish color of the water and extend over some areas on the left and the far background, it gets thin as it goes far back. Then pick the reddish tone in the middle area and paint some reflection there. The reddish tone will come all the way to the foreground water. 
Now, I'll take a new layer and with large size soft brush, I'll paint some subtle dark gradient or vignette effect in the ground and end edges to push the tension more towards the central reflection area. Next, I'll pick the warm orange tone in the sky and in a new overlay layer, I'll paint on the central area with a large soft brush to create some haze and bloom. Then I'll use a brighter yellow to add some brightness gradient and color variation in that area. Now the reflection is really standing out. Next I'll create another new layer in hard light mode, pick a subtle mid-tone orange from the area and paint a bit more fog there that's dispersing and scattering the reddish light all around. I'll use levels to make it a bit brighter and gently erase parts of it from the top of the mountain. I'll move the foreground rocks slightly to the right to make some space in the middle. Now I'll use the lasso tool to make a selection that kinda looks like the mountain that's already there and break the shape just a little. Then pick the color of the mountain and use a soft round brush in low opacity to paint it there. Now we have another large mountain even further back. This gives a better idea of environmental perspective and depth. Similarly, I'll create some similar and more pointy selections on the right side and put some darker soft shades there to add more distant mountains and all that empty negative space. Erase it from the base to show more depth. Next I'll create a new layer and pick a brighter orange tone from the middle, paint some harder fog to create more atmospheric depth and a better blend overall. Now parts of it is bleeding over the foreground, so I'll go back to the foreground layer, use a magic wand tool to select the cliff area, go back to the new fog layer and erase it from that area. I'll use a much smaller brush here to erase it so that it looks like some highlight on the cliff. This is how you can use eraser as a paintbrush. A quick before and after. Alright, now I feel that the top right area in the sky has a lot of empty negative space. It can have some structures there, like maybe huge floating rocks. So I'll use the lasso tool to make some selections there. Fill them with a dark orange color, vary the shapes as they go further back and use the lasso tool to refine the edges to look more organic and natural. The foreground rock can have another similar rock just behind it. Okay, it's time to add some textures on the floating rocks. So once again, I'll use one of the other images I had generated in the previous video apply it on the shapes in clipping mask, move it around until I feel it fits, then I'll adjust the levels to make it much darker. Now I'll use the last tool to select the shadow areas and use levels to make it darker. Now I'll use a smaller hard brush to paint some strokes and break the shape of the rock and make the textures more interesting. Now I'll use a new layer in overlay mode to paint some highlights on the left side. Finally, it's time to add some depth. I'll process colors from the nearby sky and paint it on the rocks using a low opacity soft brush. Slightly move it to the left and adjust the scale. Next, I'll add some bright light to create a strong focal point near the light source in the center. Maybe it's the setting sun. So I'll paint some bright yellow there in overlay blending mode. Finally, I feel I can add some cool sci-fi vibe by adding some lens flares. So I'll create a new layer, fill it with black color, then go to filter, render, then lens flare. Pick the third one, use screen mode to get rid of the black and stretch it really thin to make it more like what I'm picturing. Adjust the color balance with Ctrl plus B and make it more orangish and then erase the areas from the edges. I can duplicate it once more if I want the effect to be stronger. I can play around with the values, opacity, intensity until I'm satisfied. Lastly, I'll use the original lens flare that we had generated that I had kept aside as a backup. I'll place it near and over the foreground, increase the size and make it a bit reddish. Finally, I feel the reflection needs just a bit more stronger yellow highlight in overlay mode and that's it, I think that's a wrap up. So we went from this to this and I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. I'm really excited to see how artists use AI generated images to photo bash and create gorgeous environment concept arts. So what are you waiting for? Go try it out now. If you found this video useful, do like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications of my future uploads. 
So that's all for now. See you on the next one. Peace.